Hello and welcome everybody to a very special edition of Midweek Matters. Now, Charlie um, is MIA uh, away on holiday. Um, he's very, been very secretive about his whereabouts, mm. what the purpose of this visit is. Um, so Charlie's out. My co-guest, my colleague this week, um, must be disappointed. Uh, he missed the cut for um, the rap posse, um, <laughs> the group, the boy band. Hard to ex- understand why. Uh, but Brandon Smith is back for the second time this week. First off, how are you feeling about being back? And second question, how did you not make that cut? Well, like, are they, sh- are they, all, hello, are, everyone. Have they got rocks in their head for not <laughs> putting you in? First of all, hello everyone. Um, I'm a massive in compared to Charlie, so it's good. Um, do you do you know where he is? I actually have no. I, I, I've been texting him, so he's not in the jungle, but mm. um, <laughs> I don't know where he is. And he's not in rehab. It's actually I, been. I, I thought he might be going to rehab. I actually reckon our shows have been a lot better. Mm. Like, Cause, like, Cause he's got his phone with him, so that rules rehab out. <laughs> um, who gets to go away on arguably the busiest weekend of football? Like Easter weekend. Is he on holiday? He's on ho- holiday in quotation marks. What? Three weeks into the season, decides he's taking a holiday. Is he over, acting like over, he's 70 years uh, old? He's over, how old is he, 28? Uh, I think he, yeah, he's 28. He looks 10. He looks 10. Um, he's going gonna, to he's gonna away with his uh, girlfriend. Oh, maybe they're popping the question now. Hey? There we go. Maybe our listeners should just say congratulations. <laughs> like, just send them a heap of messages. <laughs> congratulations, Charlie, because there's no way this is going to go pear shaped. <laughs> oh, everyone but out it, there. It, it, this is what happens when you play this mysterious character. <laughs> um, I should have asked him where he is. Mm, I don't think he'd have told you because apparently as far it's a top as, secret. But I'm as just far saying. as the uh, enough about Charlie, if I can, mm. he taking over our show. He's not even bloody here. Um, yeah, the rap album. It, I'm, honestly, it's funny because they must love the sound of their own voice because they play they play the, their tracks in the changing rooms every day. It's like bro, really that's you. Like, do you think Eminem sits there and go listens to his own raps? Just I don't think he does. It's like all Leonardo DiCaprio sits down and puts his own movies on and just watches his own movie. I don't, like, Do you reckon he's ever watched the Titanic back? Nah, I honestly don't reckon actors watch any of their movies. Like, I've, maybe some of them, but I reckon a large majority of them would just be like, that's done, done. I'm there. done. Yeah. But you watch your own games back. Yeah, that's different. I'm studying. Mate, why don't you just say, listen, lads, I'm just going to knock this off. I'm just going to put my clips on. <laughs> just, you know, you're critiquing your lyrics. Ugh. What can I make one observation? Hmm. They, they sound a bit American. Yeah, but you have you know? Uh, well, well, like why Joey Manu and 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 well, see why Wong especially they they talk half an American. Do they? Yo, if you ring, oh, should I ring see why Wong? Ring his voicemail. Would you like to hear his Yeah, voice? go on. Let's let's do it. What's with the American influence? You'll hear, you'll hear it. I don't know what it is, but I, I, you know, they just talk. Especially when we're in America, is even worse. Like if you watch, um, on, uh, Instagram, Joey Sawali's. He did like vlogs while he was over in America. You just watch him. It's like he's talking in a full American. Hey, what's up, fam? Like, hmm. But they. They're not too bad. They have one song I really like. Mm. Um, I don't think they're ready for an album, but they kind of just make songs and don't finish them. But they they make them well enough that you can listen to that they're not just like fully polished. Mm. But I May, maybe like that that's where they need a, a good coach to come in. Like you know, oh, we just need a, we need to put a performance together for eighty mm. minutes. You know, we need to put a song together for three minutes. Like we need to. Oh, I'll tell you something as well. Like. They do it everywhere. Like they rap against each other everywhere. Oh, they like battle we, against I, each I other. I had a house party at my house last year, and I walked up into my room and it was Siwa, um, Joey Manu, Satili, 
and Joseph Suwali. Mind you, Joseph Suwali, Joey Manu, and Siwa Wong weren't drinking because mm. they don't drink much. Or Joey Suwali and Joey Manu don't drink at all. Um, and they were just on the bed rapping against each other. And then when you walked into the room, you had to you had to rap against them. <laughs> and like they'd just smash you. And it's like like Connor Watson coming and just and that when that when I mean rap, like they're bagging you like bad. And you're just mm. like, mate, I'm just trying to come upstairs for a beer. That would be a great quiz for anybody. I walk into my room <laughs> and find Siwa Wong, Suli He, <laughs> Joey Manu, and Statili Super Sorry, and Tupanua. Yeah, on my bed doing, <laughs> and then fill in the blank. Was it but a this, burp, this, like is it not even? Not even exaggerating, that went for like six hours. Like not even exaggeration at all. So like everyone's partying around, they're laying on the bed rapping against each other. And like everyone that walks in, like they'll just start bagging in their raps. And they're actually pretty good at freestyling, which mm. is um, one of the strange things. Let's see if this guy answers. I'll tell him not to answer his phone. <laughs> like listen, listen to how he talks in this. Just hold it to the mic. He just answered that you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great. That would be a great voicemail. Just saying, but that's it. That's it. <laughs> no, that that's his voicemail. But then he, what? Well, you'll you'll hear it. It's bloody hilarious, to be honest. But he's he talks in an American accent. I don't know why. Come on, mate. He could have just ended it. Yeah, send to voicemail. Holy. Hey, yo, what's good? It's your boy, Siwa. Sorry, I can't make your call at the moment. Just leave a message and I'll get back to you after the tone. Carlo. I don't even know what to say. I do not know what to say. <laughs> and it plays that so <laughs> Jesus, if you want to leave him a message, you're going to wait forever. You could have listened to it the whole way. Oh. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but did you I, hear that? What's up? What up? It's your yeah, boy, I, Siwa. I, I did hear it, Brandon. Um, <laughs> no words. Jesus Christ. <laughs> if you want to get to me, holla. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. On to the football. On to the football. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Reese Walsh, uh, it came out perhaps prematurely yesterday that he'd uh, inked Doesn't a that suck? Five million, five <laughs> million dollar deal. Uh, but then he just goes to Instagram and says, nah. Not yet. I'll let you know when it's done. So strange. You'd be one of the um, Broncos' highest ever paid players. Mm. Don't you hate when things come out prematurely? <laughs> yes, you do. You do. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> well, the, the same thing happened with uh, Lua, didn't it? With the Tigers contract. Like, yeah. I you'd say so, that yeah. it's a... High probability that he's mm. he's signing, especially yeah. if the money. But did you see the little comment he put? The, the yeah, oh, well, there is. Someone give Ken Kev my number. I think he's lost. Is it. that doctored? Is that legit? Is that legit? Yeah, that was like in the bottom right hand corner. I thought someone had doctored that. Nah, he put that up there. That's that's weird. That's that's that, very strange. Yeah, that's a strange one to go on the Insta. That one. Mm. But um, he's probably just playing funny buggers. He's pretty. Maybe he's just either high on med on pain <laughs> medication. He's just a bit bored. But yeah, I did see that his um his facial fracture doesn't require surgery. That's good. That's I reckon it's, that's only two weeks out. That's what mine mm. was. Oh, was it? Mm. I had like a surface fracture after the Maldives game. I played round two. Yeah. So hopefully the. The damages. Mm. It was strange with that because he was initially cleared to play to go back on. Yeah. 
then he his eye was closing up. He couldn't get the vision. He couldn't see properly. And then he gets. I don't know. There was yeah, a scan. Some, I, but, but I, perhaps the fracture. That, well, it's obviously the fracture. It's not yeah. the typical like when you think of a fracture, you think it's fully broken. Yeah. But with your face, you can have those hairline fractures. Can't yeah, you? I had like a. It was a surface fracture. Yeah, so surface, just, yeah. So yeah. the top was fractured, but like my whole face was numb, but it didn't hurt too bad to push. Like it was only if you pushed it really hard. Mm. So I I played the game, but my eye wasn't hurt. Like my mm. fracture was down by more my cheekbone, whereas his ones were up right near his eye. So it'd be a lot more dodgy. Some of the like um, the football players or soccer players for our Australian listeners. Um, they wear these like protective masks mm. if they get a fracture. I'd love to see Reese Walsh go out there with like a the cane mask. A mask, yeah, yeah. The basketballers do it all the yeah, time. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, how good would that be? Mm. It'd still look amazing. <laughs> like if there's one person that can go onto a field with a mask, I wonder if that's allowed in rugby league. Yeah, surely. If it's like, I wouldn't have a clue, but I know. I wonder if it's deemed as like. Um, what like too a, hard? No, like dan- like then he becomes dangerous with it on. But well, he's, he's not going to run around tailing. No, like, he's probably not tailing maying people. No, he's probably not. Is he? <laughs> um, I don't know. Be interesting to see if he does put it on there. I'd love that. But yeah, good news for Reese Walsh, and hopefully he sticks around. And I think it'd be a massive coup for for Broncos if they can lock up him, Ezra Payne. Who else? Um, of the Carrigan, Carrigan, like those four players locked away for a long time. That's the future. You can looking, build a team. Yeah, you can, yeah. The future is um, looking bright. What? Why do you think that? Like that happens where the the Broncos or did like did it come from the Broncos that they? No, I think it was just the papers. Just Curry, someone caught Curry Curry mail. I think basically it's what it's either a manager or a CEO or somebody at the Broncos or in Reese's campus, mm. you know, it's got that information through to one of the leading journalists where there's a bit of a relationship going on mm. and they've gone, it's close and they've gone, oh, maybe instead of it being close, I'll just say, is it, oh, it's basically done, right? And they've just gone to run with it's done. Yeah. That's so generally what happens. So Reese has come out and gone, this isn't true, but I will take 6 million from another club. <laughs> he, he pro- well, I haven't signed get anything, and he'd, the- he'd, he'd, he'd get way over. He'd it, get, like I if he if he went to open market, he'd get well over one point two a year. Yeah, see if if he's gone, I I don't. Can he do that? <laughs> I haven't signed yet. Um, so clubs five point five is where I'm at. Talk to me, mm. and he would. He definitely. Like, I could see him getting one point five over four years. Like. Yeah, you get way well. The the offer for like yeah. a well, think about like for a club with a war chest and and no yeah. outside back. Geez, well, even the sponsorship opportunities. I mind you, he is in Brisbane, so yeah. there'd be there'd be a heap of stuff there. But wherever he went, they'd be yeah, you know, falling over themselves. Me and him to could him. model together. Exactly. Maybe he could come to the Roosters and be part of the band. I think we've got a bit left in the cap too. Ooh. Tedesco is. No, nah, we would keep the, Tedesco. We'd probably no, put uh, Reese Walsh in six. No, so Walsh has got this year and next. Tedesco's got this year and next. Are you are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> no, nah, we'll have Walsh. We'll get we'll get him off the bench. Fourteen. Yeah. Just yeah. To, uh, the X Factor <laughs> just, player. Just bring some energy. Yeah, we just need, we just need an X Factor style player. Uh, speaking of buying things, NRL uh, reportedly. Going to attempt to buy Leichhardt Oval. Yes, I did see that. That's great. I think it's I a good idea. It'd be a good idea. I think it's a great idea. Of our own stadium, like, mm. and we can and we could build something. Well, I think yeah. Well, the way Landis is going, he wants to bloody do everything. It looks it looks like there's some money to be spent in the NRL. It does. Con- I'm con- loving congratulations it. to them. I I think if they could, but obviously it's a massive asset to have. We need more assets. I know they've bought a number of hotels and and whatnot, but. To buy if they were to, you know, have a full purchase of like our oval, put some money into it, you know, there's no reason as mm. as to why. Well, there's you know, there's a lot of possibilities that they or, or a lot of potential with it. Yeah, for sure. Like it, ju- it just needs a spruce up. That's all. 
All right, keep the hill. <laughs> it needs a bit more than a spruce or <laughs> more than a bit of a lick of paint. Nah, she's all right. Keep it old school. Mm. But uh, yeah, like the facilities and and the the bar in that corporate areas that that needs a spruce up. But I feel like the the stadium doesn't need a breakdown rebuild. No, no, it doesn't need a knockdown rebuild, but it needs needs some work into it. But I guess the New South Wales Premier or the person in charge of the council or whatever says no. So yeah. NRL to the rescue. Be interesting to see what happens there. And then if that happens, do other clubs start to go or do other councils start to sort of sell off yeah. uh, the land there and make it? Uh, but it'd be, it'd be weird the Tigers playing home games at an NRL-owned venue. Do you know what I mean? Why is that weird? Uh, I guess, well, it's not been done before. I think they do it in AFL with the AFL own some of the stadium down there. Mm. But Marvel Stadium, yeah, they own that. It do, uh, there's one thing for sure. It wouldn't be called like Heart Oval anymore. What would it be called? They'd um, get a name and rights partner for sure because it's that's all worth money. Like there's certain grounds that yeah right, like right. If you think like Mount Smart Stadium used to be Ericsson Stadium, mm. like uh, Brookvale Oval, a fish. It's Four Pines Park, like yeah. a core stadium. People blo like blow up if you refer to it as A and Z because it's not the. So if Leichhardt was bought by the NRL, one of the ways to re um, generate revenue would be um, look, guys, it is Leichhardt Oval, but we're gonna it's gonna go to a name and rights partner. Yeah. But that's all right. The buy round stadium. <laughs> have we got the cash in the? Uh, have we got the cash in the kitty? Well, what's on a bit of, you know, we, we'll we'll talk it up. Part <laughs> of that, we'll, we'll talk up the buy round stadium on the buy round. The buy round Jeff stadium. Peter and and Andrew are listening. We thought this idea first. <laughs> so. Get down to the buy round stadium. <clears throat> mm. Imagine how much people were track. Yeah. Those hats would be on the compulsory men. <laughs> um, yeah, the possibilities are endless. But no, that, I think that that's what would happen. Uh, but anyway, Cheese, on to this weekend's games. Um, you spoke about him earlier in the week. Your mate Lindsay Collins, uh, you've had the last laugh because he's not playing this week. Mm. So he was taking the piss out of your face. Yeah, I think, well, the elbow was so much force... And my head is so hard, it sent a shockwave down his body. Mm, he threw the it. elbow straight through the hemi. Tore his hamstring. Yeah. So, you know what the message is there? <laughs> don't mess with yeah, Brandon but Smith. In honesty, I wish he was playing. Yeah. But don't elbow me in the head next time. Yeah. Uh, no, Nathan Cleary. It, like, because this is a huge, this is, I reckon this is a huge game for, for the Roosters. Um, I reckon it's a, it's going to be a real, indication for everybody outside of the four wall, four walls there to see where you guys are at. Now, obviously, no Nathan Cleary. Um, has there been any extra talk this week about coming up against the three-time champions, the Penrith Panthers? Been any talk? I mean, yeah, there's... Like, is there anything different about this week? Uh... <laughs> Nah, not really, to that be honest. long pause means there has been. Like, nah, you, like, you just realise you don't want to talk I'm trying about to, it. No, but I'm trying to think. Like, there's not, it's not been like a, a focal point. I guess the no Nathan Cleary has been. It's been mm. like, who gives a F who's playing, mm. who's not playing. We've got to go down there with the mindset, blah, blah, blah. Like, nothing over the top. Pretty much the same as... Rabbitohs. Mm. I think they're trying to take a lot of the emotion out of it because we've got yeah. a bunch of buggers that like to get sent off and Simbin when they get too emotional in games. So, yeah, but but with Nathan Cleary not playing, does that put extra pressure on you? Do you think to win? Because if you don't win and Nathan doesn't play, then it's I'd, a massive I, psychological yeah. Advantage. I, I guess I guess so, but it's just too early to say that. Mm. I think if it was like round 10 to 12, yeah. then it's more, um, I guess, you know, the bigger picture. But I don't think, well, I certainly didn't think about it until you've just said it now. That's for sure. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, for, for a lot of people, this is the grand final in waiting. Yeah. And it's what I've seen so far. It'll be the grand final in waiting. Mm. Like there's a lot of um, 
twists and turns and ups and downs, but yeah. I think this has the potential to be the first uh, weekend in October for this year, the game to be played. It's um, an interesting one as well because you're both two and one. And the winner will obviously, you know, you don't need me to do the math. The winner goes to three and one, good start. The the loser goes to two and two, mm. and then that, oh, we've probably a probably a stu- uh, probably you'd be. I think this whoever wins, then they get the pass mark of the first block of four games of the season, if that makes sense. So I think there's a fair bit riding on the line. You, you the Roosters have played some bloody good teams and had a tough start mm. to the season as have the Penrith Panthers but I think this is one of those games it's either the team gets the tick of approval for the block of four or the cross yeah and the- well it's, it's it's a good test for us it's mm. a good um and yeah I guess you're right about the the mental thing because if we win and we we've had that block of four teams and and we've ended up three and four then it's a it's a really yeah. good I guess kickstart to our mm. start of our season um but you start to like, believe we can do something here yeah exactly and um it's been a focus point to not be a slow starting team this year we feel like we've ticked that box um half already mm. but this is the real test this is the this is the the world title i guess mm. you call it the, we, like they're the best yeah with them, with, um, with uh, Cleary not playing, does more attention go on to Luai and Isaiah? Oh, for sure. Mm. I mean, it just goes to the. I think, um, you know, it's more so probably Isaiah Yo is more hands on the ball than than Luai, but um, it's also you can't really take the the other people lightly because mm. you don't want to put all your attention and go, oh, shit, these guys shocked you. Like uh, Schneider at half, you don't want him to come out and, I guess, play his best game of football. So you've got to put a put a lot of attention on him as well um, and just, I don't know, make sure he's not trying to be a Nathan Cleary. Has um, Spencer Lanyu given you much, like, advice coming into this game? Uh, Has he spoke to the group about Penrith? Or, nah. No. No. I think that where he's from, he's, <laughs> he doesn't do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think Robbo's put him in a position to have to do that stuff. Yeah, that's fair. It'll be uh, on a, another good news story. Uh, Penrith, uh, Maverick Geyer will be making his debut, who's the son of Bloody awesome name. Mark Geyer. So Bloody yeah, congratulations to him. I know it's been an emotional emotional week for for mg hmm. uh so congratulations mg friend of the buy round so congrats um, maverick um, idea of the shit game <laughs> <How good's laughs> and then on to good friday one of um my favorite times of the year and not for what's about to happen with the chocolate and all the stuff with easter Souths against the Bulldogs. Jesus used to bring out the best and worst in me. I used to love this. Really? Yes, I used to get... It's a grand final, final rematch. Uh, not yet. Well, it was more the ones before that. Really? Um, yeah, like the one in is that, 12. Is that a rivalry, is it? Well, it... For it, you it, it was. Be, it became a rivalry. So I think the very first Bulldogs Souths um, Good Friday game started... That started the year I came. Yeah. And obviously with the two Englishmen. Englishmen. And a, well, he had a couple more to back him up, didn't he? Sam, yeah. <laughs> I only needed one. <laughs> I don't... I, don't, I, my, few, I, uh, I left my brothers at home. <laughs> <laughs> I came alone. <laughs> but anyway... Um, They're not small, those Englishmen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, that, that's where the rivalry, I guess, began. But it was based off the fact that we were two highly competitive teams mm. in and around that period. So, the that, dogs of war that, re, that rivalry really built. But it, but my, I used to like be bricking it at least. they being like, oh my god, like, the, like we're on, like we <laughs> are on. And also, Here we go. it was going to set the tone for how my Easter was going to look like on a personal level. Because if we lost, get out of my face. I do not want to speak to you. <laughs> I don't care if your cafe is closed on Easter Sunday. I'm coming in. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm coming through the window yeah. or through the door. You let me know. Hey, the supermarkets are closed. Well, guess what? I've just lost. So I need something <laughs> to eat. So open up now. Um, and then similarly, if we won, be like, I don't give a shit. We just beat South. Open up. Open the doors. <laughs> um, but no, it'll be. Um, it, it's always a, a a great time of year. They should get a healthy crowd out there, and the the rivalry is is still alive. I think for, for de- very different real re- uh, very different reasons. There's a fair bit on the line. The pressure um, on South Sydney. It, it, for me, it's getting close to a must win game. Oh, it's definitely a must win game. Not just for the the confidence. Like if you go on zero and four, like they've had three hard hot positions. And no disrespect to the Bulldogs, but like they're just a grade below the standard they've played, the teams they've played at, at, against at the moment. Um, like it's going to be tough, and and Jason Demetrio is going to be under a lot of pressure, and um, and I honestly think the Bulldogs will be able to get it done if they play anything like they did last week, especially if they played anything any way they did last week. Um, with their their star players shining in that game, like Marnie, the kick out, Preston, if they all have the big game they had last week, yeah, um, I think they're in for a massive chance. And um, Self's just they seem to be uh, a little bit of a victim of bad luck with the draw and and bad luck with the pressure that they've been put on by the outside noise, which is. Um, yeah, it's always a tough ask. Yeah, for me, Souths are there for the taking and the Bulldogs just, they don't want to be the team that plays them back into form or back into a win mm. like because the rest of the competition will be pretty pissed off. If if the Bulldogs put in a shit performance and the and Souths like jag a victory, that's when everyone's like, why? Like yeah. you've played them back into form here. You've get, yeah. played them back into confidence. I think Souths are there for the taking. Um, I, I Add still, a car back for the Bulldogs? I don't, yeah, he's on the extended squad, but I don't think he's going to play. Mm. Uh, to be fair, Connor Tracy was immense last week. Oh, he was he was over two hundred meters. Picked him up in my fantasy. Ran a ran, ran for a shitload of meters. So he was he was very Mate, good. He, I told you when. <laughs> well, I said I was a big fan of Connor Tracy when they when they signed Mate, him. He's a, very good. That's it, a great pick because he's one of those guys that I love to mm. see play, or like I'd imagine I'd love to play with because he just there's nothing to him, but. Like he just has a crack, and Blake Taff up against his old club as well, mm. so that could be interesting. He knows the inner workings of that mm. South team, but they also will be getting stuck into him as well. So watch out for the sledges there. But I've got the Bulldogs, no surprises. Actually, I forgot to give a tip. The Roosters, I reckon you'll win. Uh, the same. And I've got the Bulldogs <laughs> going. I've got one. I reckon one to twelve Roosters, one to twelve Bulldogs. Uh, the Broncos against the Cowboys. The Cowboys, the only team in the competition who are undefeated. Like how well, after three rounds, mm. who have they played? Uh, they played the Dolphins. They beat the Dragons, Dragons last week, and they beat Newcastle. Like That's... so, they've not really had like a massively difficult introduction to season twenty twenty four. But still, you've got to get that shit done. Mm. Um, and they take on the Broncos. Like it's been a classic game over the years. Yeah, uh, Reynolds is back for the Broncos. Is a huge in. Sailor in for Walsh. Corey Oates on the bench. Bit strange. I, I don't get that. But unless they're planning on playing Corey Oates back on row. edge, yeah, like back edge back row. I just don't get it. Or or yeah, but Sa- Sailor's in at fullback. Sailor, who's the Who's the wingers? Sailor could go to like half or something. Who's their halves? Uh, Ezra Mam and oh Reynolds. Reynolds. Nah, yeah, I thought unless it was... it, yeah, it could be maybe back up for. Well, I think a, a fullback could go to, like Sailor could go to the bench and Corey Oates come in and yeah, but then yeah, oh, and um, yeah. Sal and Cobo go fullback, something like that. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It's if... a weird one though. Yeah, but it it's got the. It's always a great game. This this mm. rivalry is really built over the years, and they've come up with some some um, some great games over the years. It, I reckon that Bentia Cora should be. I know Payne Hass is missing. Have you seen the size of Bentia Cora? 
P- oh, yeah, yeah. T- Mate. Takuda. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, he's over he's two years. He's one little years. brother's age, though. He's I nine, think. He's 19, but yeah. man, how old's Suwali? 20. All right. <laughs> Mate, I, I don't care. I, the fact that he's 19, have you seen how, have you seen how big he is? I hope he plays. Have you seen how big that man is? Like, Yeah. I'd smack him. <laughs> he's my little brother's mate. I'd never let my little brother's mate run over me. I'd smack him. <laughs> he is a monster. <laughs> yeah. And, and Marty Tapahu as well. He didn't get picked. He's outside the... The 17, but um, I've got Broncos for me. How about you? I've got Cowboys. Do you? Yeah. Why, why do you think the Cowboys are one? No, just I rate them as a team. I rate them as a team. They've had, I guess, they've been on the bad end of the stick against Broncos in the last couple of years. I don't think they've won many. I don't think they won any last year in mm. the Broncos. And I think Broncos just... There's too many missing. Haas, Haas and Walsh. Walsh. And Reynolds, we don't know how yeah. fit he yeah, is. Yeah, fair enough. So but the Cowboys to go 4-0. Oh. Yeah. You, I don't um, want them to win, mm-hmm. but you think my not? brain's telling me they're going to win. Well, that's good that you listen to your brain. Yeah. As opposed to listening to your heart. Yeah. What's your heart saying? Yeah, Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Uh <laughs> That wraps up the Friday night's games. Saturday, the Dragons. I used to be at the that. Cowboys, remember? Ah, There's still yeah. a little soft spot there. Yeah. They did sack me. They sacked you? They sacked me. Uh, they lost. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> uh, Dragons take on Manly. Uh, few back for the Dragons. Manly, same team. Sipley not picked. He's back from his suspension in the trials. I thought he might have got a, he might have snuck on the bench. Is he? Um, I thought he got four weeks. No, he's, he's back and available, but he's in the extended. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's, definitely. That's very interesting. I, yeah, Manly, Manly need to win. Dragons need to win even more. Um, my beautiful Dragons, mm. my top eight Dragons. Uh, <laughs> and your, um, Jesse Marsky is playing again off the bench this week. He's yep. kept his spot. I would yep. No, um, that's awesome. I thought I figured he might um, be able to do that because he he's actually a halfback. Oh, is he? Yeah, so he he played a uh, halfback for the North Sydney Bears. He won halfback of the year in the New South Wales Cup. Ah, oh, right, okay. Uh, yeah, nice. But yeah, he just got put in that situation and become like, oh, so. Yeah, yeah. Dragons got a few back. I think um, Debella moves to the bench. Uh, Francis Molo back in. Jaden Sewer back. But for me, I can't see anything but a manly victory. They were. They were so good to begin that game against Para. They just mm. fell away. Um, and they had a couple of opportunities that they bombed, or well, obviously with the Jakey um, obstruction. But I reckon Manly all the way for me. What about you? It's my roughie of the week, boys. Dragons. Okay. My top eight dragons. They're going to do it. I just, yeah, I think it's a must-win game. And I feel like against the, the team last week, the Cowboys, they they should have won. Mm. They're just that one error kind of. Yeah, the big turning point, wasn't and it? And Jacob Little's back. I rate him as a player, as a hooker. Um, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I'm not saying Manly. Manly should get the job done, but if I'm going to pick an upset of the week this week, I'm going to go Dragons. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Titans play the Dolphins a little bit later in a, another Queensland derby. A huge game for the Titans. Campbell is back. Fafita, uh, David may be back. He's in the extended. Mate, they they just need something. They need some attack. They need those two players because they have been awful with the ball. They just lack yeah. strike. They lack a bit of creativity. Obviously, Campbell's speed and in- instinct will help. Fafita's just got things in his locker that no one else can do. Yeah, but it's hard to see the the Dolphins not not getting the victory there. The way they've been playing after round one, they obviously they had the the buy and then a decent victory. But they, I just don't know how the Titans come back. Yeah, I I I feel I feel for them. I feel for Desi. I feel for Tino. Um, 
Fafita coming back would be a massive switch because he, like you said, he's got things in his bag that no one else can do, and that's like there's no true word spoken. Like he can do things that you know a hundred percent of the team, a hundred percent of the players in NRL can't do. Um, it's just what can they do off the back of that? Yeah, and he hasn't played in a very long time. He's probably not game fit. Um, yeah, they, it's important they don't just lob him the ball and say. Yeah, One day, exactly. do you know? Well, the apparently, two weeks it, to make up for. Apparently, that's what happened uh, in the reserve grade side when that with Nelson. They just said, "Here, take this and see what you can do." But he hadn't played or trained or run mm. properly in you know over ten weeks. So, um, yeah, I just I, f- I see it being very grim for the Titans this yeah. year. Um, I don't, <laughs> you just got to feel for Desi. Oh man, I can. He'd be pulling his hair out with that as well. Fafita's got a, a clause in his contract that he can trigger up until up until round ten and leave. I I don't understand how that's been allowed. What do you mean? Like he can just so he can leave at the end of this season. He's got a clause. So next season he's signed. He, he's I think he's got a long term deal there. Oh, did but he? there's a clause in his contract at round ten for this season. He makes his mind up whether he wants to stay or go. So you can go to open market as of round ten. The way, the way the Titans are, it might not even be a bad thing if he was to go mm. and use because he's might on, be a win-win for both people. He's on a massive wet. He's on massive coin. Yeah, I, so they I can remember. put that coin somewhere else. But like, if if he if he goes and they don't bring any, they can't land a marquee player. They, it's going to be a tough couple of years there. Like, full of optimism to begin the year, but far out, they've been disappointing. Yeah. Yeah, I've got the, um, no surprise, the Dolphins in that one. Then the Warriors take on the Newcastle Knights. Warriors have got their third choice fullback. Warriors. will have some struggles under the high ball. <laughs> Is that their third choice fullback? No, I don't think. I think he was playing, he played a bit of, Fullback at the end of the game there, right? Eh? Yeah, he's, he's he's filled in. <laughs> he's filled in. He does all right, though. Jesus. He's got a lot of potential, that third choice fullback for the Warriors. Yeah, young, young up and comer. Mm. <laughs> he get, I'm backing him to have a good game, actually. But didn't he? He ran for over 200 metres last week. Did he? He scored a try. Yeah, he's been good. He scored a try from absolutely nothing yes. as well. Just, he skipped past. It was insane. That I try. did see the commentator said his name three times. He he started inside one of the players <laughs> on. The, he, so he started on the. He was to looking at the defender. He would have been on the left hand side of the the first defender that he beat as he looked at it. Skipped to that defender's right. Then the next defender again, obviously, he the start on the thing. left. <laughs> skips to that person's right, beats them. And then goes over and scores. Yeah. Like that is a an insanely difficult thing to do. Yeah. That not you know, you speak about David Fafita and his direct running. Not many players can skip past two in such small, like yeah. a small a little amount of space. Like he had no room to work with and he just <laughs> went bang, bang, see you later. Other than us two. Other than us two. Other than us two in this competition, there's Thanks not many coming. that could do that. Um, and with Marata Nikakore back, and I think Wade, Wade Egan's back this week, it's going to be a tough ass for Newcastle. They limped past the storm. Mm. Without Hughes Without and Munster. Without Hughes, Munster, Nelson, Welsh. Like, I think it could be a long day for Newcastle over yep. there. All right, yeah, the Warriors... The, with, like they have the games they've lost, like arguably they shouldn't have lost. Who mm. who did they have? Uh, they lost to Cronulla. Sharks. They 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 shouldn't have lost. They that. They, uh, they had they, yeah they, they had, had them game. on the pump. Yeah. and they lost to Storm, Storm. which coats. Yeah, Storm. They definitely should have lost yeah. that. They were up by eight with three minutes to go. They were. The, I'm gonna. I I had the Warriors sliding out the eight this year. Much to the annoyance of the Warriors fans that are fans of the show, mm. they let us know about it as well. They are not happy. Maybe I've changed my mind, but mm. they they've been great in in defeat and in victory. So 
Big win for the Warriors. You going the same? Yeah, I'm going the Warriors. Uh, then the Sharks take on the Raiders. Um, this could have been Horsburgh v Hunt round two. Um, <laughs> but Horsburgh's not getting picked, which is strange. And Hunt's out injured. But the Sharks, he's not the only one missing. They've got Finucan or Finucane, sorry. Rudolph Hunt. <laughs> Funakane. <Hammer>. Funakane. <laughs> Finucane. Uh, Talakai movers into the back row. This is another one of those, both teams two and one. Tough game. I, yeah. I've been speaking to Nico a lot lately because uh, I just got to check on his head every now and then and I was telling him, mate, you can't play three like hectic games in a row. You gotta you gotta have at least one bad game and um yeah, I rang him the other day, we were playing PlayStation together, gave him a little call, said how his head was, he was still filthy ass. <laughs> so I don't think it worked, but um I reckon oh, He kicked you out on the full, didn't he? Yeah, let's not remind him. Let's not yeah. remind him. Um yeah, he's pretty gutted on himself. Yeah. I was actually playing with Braden Trindle as well. And uh yeah. He seemed to get over it, but Nico hasn't got over it yet. Mm. Um, I didn't. The whole forward bag is actually missing. Mate, it, the, Canberra needs like Canberra have got a lot of strength and depth. Like I say, Corey Horsburgh not in the seventeen, but mm, it's going to be something going on there. You reckon? I don't know. Well, he had a hell of a year last year. I don't see yeah. why he would they be. Got not. Morgan Smithies in and some of the. the, 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 the <laughs> I guess Rick and, you Ricky, were right about him. Ricky Stewart's looking at and go. Oh, I can't really you know, no matter how well someone's playing, unless there is something going on. But if there is, there'd be plenty of teams want that mad ginger bastard yeah. playing for them. Um, I just think the way that the Sharks and the Raiders play game style, they they play like a similar style. It's that grindy game mm. sort of, a, like Raiders are just, like they're just hanging in that, hanging in that game for the whole 80 minutes. And I feel like the Sharks did that well against the Warriors. And it's just a battle of who can kind of hang on the longest. And mm-hmm. I feel like the Sharks are... Yeah. If, yeah, I feel like the Sharks will get them. I, th- I think... Um, you Cam- can go the Raiders. I reckon Canberra's forward. Just because back. there's a there's pommy bloke in the... Yeah, in, there's two. Just because there's Whitehead. a pommy bloke in the Raiders, you can go for them. I don't yeah, mind. It's all don't good. Worry. I'm going <laughs> to. Uh, I reckon the Canberra middle forwards will give... Um, will be too much for the Sharks. Um, we need to have a little tips column on our... We do. Uh, no, actually, no, we don't. On the don't buy want, round. I don't want people to be reminded about <laughs> shit my tips are. Uh, finally. No, we East- should have a battle, though. If we're going to do the tips every week, we should have a, a battle mm. for some cash. It's not fair because then you get to go to the Roosters and I and I have to go to the Bulldogs. You don't have to go to the Bulldogs. I do. <laughs> because they are going to win every week. <laughs> uh, Power of the Tigers to wrap up Easter weekend, Easter Monday. I'll be out there. Um should be a great game. Gutted for Mitchell Moses. He's going to be missing eight weeks with that surgery. But Blaze Talangi will take over just at read number that. six. <laughs> I just read that. That's absolutely shocking. Yeah, mate. Well, it, it looked like it was his groin. He was in all sorts during that game. Like he was really struggling, with, I think, with the groin. And then he hit his foot late in the piece. But Parabee Tigers, that Blaze Talangi will play six. Uh, Dylan Brown at seven. Sivo back. Look, the Tigers are coming off a great victory, but surely, surely Parramatta will be an, a too big a step off. Nah, I've got Tigers. You got Tigers? <laughs> I liked them. What did you like about them? I just liked them. Benji's jacket. I, I just like the. I, I, you know what? Benji's dress mm. for like our oval was. He looked like he was. Dressed to impress. No, Moses is a big out, Mm -hmm. I think, is a huge out. Um, I've never seen Blaze Talangi play. He looked good on the weekend. I watched him live. No one does that to Tommy Turbo. Is he the Uh, one? He's the one that ran straight over Tommy. No one does that to Tommy Turbo. Come on, have some damn Mm. respect. No, but he he looked like a. um, He he looked like he had been playing, Mm. you know, 50 games. He looks like Dylan Brown as well. Yeah. He's got that same elusiveness. Mm. They're quite a good looking side, Para. Mm. You know, minus Campbell Gillard. Uh, who else? Well, that's a little stab at Campbell Gillard. Um, but yeah, I I don't know what it is. 
about the Tigers. I watched their game. I guess I'm a big Uppy Coruscant fan. Um, he was streets above anyone on that Justin field, Olam, but one of my good mates, and I just feel like if they can build a bit of confidence off last week, I think they can take it into this game and get the dub. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, well, I've got Parramatta. I reckon the way they hung in there against Manly was sensational. Yeah. I don't know. I reckon the Tigers, it was great. I just worry about consistency. My like multi, if you put all my tips together, would be... Be substantial. <laughs> because you've got some Smokies in there. <laughs> uh, anyway, Cheese, it's been great to have you filling in for Charlie on Midweek Matters, seeing you twice this week. We'll be mm. back as well on Monday for Jam and Cheese, mm. straight after... Parramatta against the West Tigers. I'm coming straight into studio to Might come in with a Tiger outfit. Just yes, we'll we'll, we'll get to find out <laughs> just exactly how those tips went, and uh, it's been much improved. I, I'm glad of you know you've brought so much to this show, and <laughs> Charlie, wherever you are, I hope you're watching. I hope you're taking notes. You've got one more chance, Charlie White, um, and I hope that this holiday. And I hope that was, ring is a big one. <laughs> I hope this holiday is everything you thought was going to be, Charlie. Good luck, and we'll see you soon.